Hi. I want to talk about what would happen when you decide finally you're going to leave your narcissist and they don't know it's coming. Because I'm sure you have that question. I'd love to, but I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. We've already talked about how they have been grooming and grooming other people, online dating sites, texting people, the whole time they've been with you. But their narcissist, the next supply may or may not be quite ready to receive them. Say they've been grooming someone, again, my pronoun is he. Say the he that we're discussing was grooming a girl and she's in a relationship that she's trying to get rid of, so she's not ready to receive him. Say another girl lives in a different state. Say there could be a million reasons. So if you discard them, which is a glorious feeling, by the way, I can just tell you, you leave a hole. You left a hole. It's an emergent situation now for them to plug up that hole. It's like, um, think of like gushing water. You know, like if a pipe breaks in your house, and you got hardwood floors and everyone's going nuts and you're grabbing towels and you're panicking and about that is the desperation with which they will react if you discard them and they are not prepared with new supply at the ready that they can run to that minute that minute so that's when you are really gonna hear it thick oh my god please come back to me i love you so much i blew the best thing i ever had i'm so sorry i'll change i love you i love you will hear they will pull out every thing they can think of to tell you because they're trying to plug up the hole the water is gushing they're trying to plug up the hole and they are desperate to fill that gap they can never ever ever they can never ever ever have a gap in their supply ever last video we talked about being alone that's what made me think about it. they can never ever do that so if you go ahead and discard them without warning or even with warning you know you start to talk about it and they start to think, the thing is if you give them some warning they're going to try to lock in a couple of deals on the other wherever to make sure that they have a place to go to. And I don't mean a literal place. Well, maybe you do live together, so it might mean a literal place. But, um, and it probably is that they live with you. From the experience I've seen in life, and from what I've read and heard and seen in these videos, they kind of live like nomads, like gypsies. You know what I mean? Like they don't own homes or have roots anywhere. They bounce around and live with whomever. They live with roommates. They live with girlfriends. They live with, you know what I mean? They don't have any kind of root system where they can have their own base, their own responsibility, their own domain. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, they generally do not. So it is probably a really desperate situation for them in that if you are discarding them, say you, you're in your home and you throw them out. That's a good feeling, by the way. Guess who gets to remain in the home? The homeowner. The homeowner gets to remain in the home. And you kick the narcissist out and they are floored that you did that. They can't believe it. How could you get rid of me? Oh my God. And then you're shocked more. It, it kind of will show you how absolutely clueless they are about their behavior. When they're shocked that you get rid of them. And then you're shocked that they're shocked. From that moment, it becomes easier. But they will desperately, desperately give you everything they have to not make you leave them. They will say the words that they're sorry. They will cry. Oh, that's a good one. It goes like this. It's beautiful. They're no Meryl Streep, but it is beautiful. Because it reeks of being fake. And I want you to look at it like it's fake. I don't want you to get sucked back in. In that first initial discard is when they will come at you the hardest. With all of that, 
you know, love bombing language that you've been waiting to hear again. And they will recite poetry and please. Mm -hmm. And just keep in mind that it's only because you're creating a gap. And because, of course, they're out of control. That is an entire, of course, that's why also. They can't be out of control. But the gap, if you are creating a gap for a narcissist where they don't have supply lined up immediately, it's going to be desperate. And the gushing hole is what I, what I think of. But you're, like, the control part is, is, a, is a constant. They have lost control of you. You've made up your own mind. You're not going to bend. They can't change it back. No matter what they say, you're not biting. That's alarming for them. They're not used to that. And you have a right. Uh-huh. You do. You have a right to maintain your focus on yourself. It's kind of like saying, um, I don't care that you feel those things anymore. Or that you tell me that you feel those things anymore. I don't care. Mini. <laughs> um... I just want you to know what's coming because it can be quite alarming. There could be tears and let's stay up all night and talk and I'll do everything you wanted and okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't, I don't have to tell you what I think about that. Come on. So I just want you to know what's coming. So if you discard one and that comes at you, just, just think of the gushing hole. They are desperately grabbing towels, buckets, everything to stop that water. That's all they're trying to do. Okay? So if you want to discard your narcissist, you go right ahead. 